Hello friends, welcome to a new video. This is gonna be very different than any other videos I filmed and that's because I am taking it back to old school YouTube and the videos that I used to love watching some of the most and it is favorites videos. So I thought I would walk you through some of my 2023 slash overall favorites from last year. I know I'm a little late. Everybody was posting this at the beginning of January, but here I am. This is when I'm posting mine. So I thought I would start with skincare. Overall, my number one skincare brand of last year for my serums and most of my item or most of my face products was clear stuff. They are supposed to be very purposefully made for acne prone skin because they don't have any pore clogging ingredients like I've been going on and on about that I tried to make that a real point last year. So I love their clarity serum, their stem cell serum, and their moisturizer also really good. I use their Hydra Berry Moisture Mask and then their other standard moisturizer. I don't think I grabbed that from the bathroom, but the whole um, clear stem line I really enjoyed last year. The product that surprised me the most last year too was actually from Rode, um, Hailey Bieber's line, and I didn't think I would really enjoy any of her products but I was thoroughly surprised. This is the Rode um, Peptide Glazing Fluid. Again, no pore clogging ingredients and I loved using this in the morning. This is completely out. So highly, highly recommend that. My other major favorites, as you can see, I've gone through multiple of these. These are, this one's completely empty. This one has a little bit left. And then I think I used up a third one was Summer Friday's sunscreen. This is my number one sunscreen from the year. Absolutely loved it. My absolute favorite. I don't think I would try another sunscreen in a long time. I like actually that it doesn't have a tint because it doesn't get on any of my hats or anything like that on a no makeup day when I'm whacking that thing on. So love that. The other thing I completely used up from Summer Fridays last year was their eye cream and it's their vitamin C peptide eye cream and I really loved this product as well. So Summer Fridays is always a win in my book. And that's it for skincare. The one makeup item I wanted to talk about is my number one foundation from last year. Again, I have just a little bit left in here. This is, was my go-to all of last year and the year before. And I see nothing wrong with it. I think it's a great foundation. So this was my favorite from the year before. I don't know. I purchased a different one this year, but loved this. This is a tried and true, so I don't see anything wrong with it. If you want to check it out, it's great. Next, hair care. The two things that I love the most in terms of hair care last year is putting rosemary oil in my scalp as a leave-in treatment. I really like this Miel one because it's very affordable. I can get it off Amazon, I think it's like 10 bucks. I've gone through multiple of these bottles and I drench my scalp in them, I massage my scalp, and then I leave it in overnight or for three, three hours, couple hours, something like that. And I think it's made a huge difference in the baby hair growth of my hair and making sure it falls out less because I really struggle from that. The other oil that I've loved for two years now at least, this bottle has lasted me because it's a pretty big bottle is the Gizu hair oil. I will say if you have very fine hair, I don't think this is the hair oil for you. I think it would weigh your hair down too much and look greasy, but if you have like thicker, coarser hair, kind of like me, you put this in wet hair. I don't think you need a leave-in conditioner. I don't think you need anything else. All I would do is I would put this in my hair and it would be so soft, so nourished, and this bottle has literally lasted me 
forever. Mind you, I only wash my hair about once to two times a week and um, it's lasted me this long. Again, if, maybe if you wash your hair every day, this would go th wouldn't last nearly as long, but you know, it is what it is. Next, my favorite kind of adjacent line item to the makeup and the skincare and the hair care is this Stony Clover bag to house my makeup and hair care when I travel. It is huge and you can fit so much into it. I keep my little mini size travel essentials in there at all times so I can just whack whatever other stuff I need in here. And it is by far the best thing. They're kind of pricey and I did get my initials customized on it, but I absolutely love it. I don't know that I would love it for a makeup bag because I don't know if you can see, I've already stained it a little bit here at the top and it would just continue staining from makeup. So skincare just doesn't stain that much. So that's why I'm using it specifically for that. And the sad part about these bags is they're not very wipeable. So once you get a makeup stain on it, it pretty much stays, which is a little unfortunate. So. I would give this like four stars just because it's not wipeable. That's my only gripe with it, but I mean, so cute, so practical. I love pouches like this when I travel. Love, one of my favorite things from last year. Next, again, adjacent to the skincare and the hair care is hair clips. These are specifically from MEJ. These are brand new, Michael just got them for me, but I got one hair clip from MEJ that I wore all summer. It was pink with little bows on it. I've unfortunately lost that over the holidays and I'm so sad I need to repurchase it. But these hair clips, if you have hell am I going who am I trying to impress but these are the perfect heel height and they're really soft and supple and they don't rub you too much because the leather is so so nice unlike again cheaper brands like Steve Madden or something like that my opinion do whatever you want but in my opinion these are the more elevated version of that get yourself a pair of white sandals or white shoes you'll be amazed with how much you can wear them
with. That's it. Next, two pairs of pants that have rocked my world. Rocked, okay? They're the best. Starting with the comfiest one. This has been the year of cargos and parachute pants specifically because they are the perfect everyday pant, especially in Seattle where you don't have to, like people don't dress up as much. I love these. These are specifically from local European and they look huge. They're definitely oversized on me and I really cinch in the waist with this drawstring. Um, you can really cinch it in as you can, as you can see, but they're meant to be a very oversized look. They are so comfortable. Nothing stains them. Everything washes out. They're so light in the summer when it's hot. Like nothing is like clinging to you. You you can still like fold your legs. Like I could walk around in these all day. I would travel in these in the airport. They are literally that comfortable. They have them in different colors from local, local European. I think they're kind of like the OG parachute pant brand. Um, there's a ton of dupes now in Zara and Abercrombie and Mango, so many. Um, these are a little bit on the pricier side. I can't speak for all the dupes, but these specifically have been through hell and back and there's still no signs of wear on these. There's no stains, nothing. So I have worn these to death. I've washed them a bajillion times and nothing seems to take effect on these pants. So I would go with local European. I want to get them in a gray and a white color too, and maybe even in a black. I've only had green this entire year and I've worn them to death. So that's that. Highly, 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 highly recommend. Lifesaver. The next is a pair of jeans, okay? Listen, we all know how hard it is to find a pair of jeans, especially for tall girls, okay? I don't know what it is about brands not making jeans that hit the floor for people who are five, nine and above. What gives? I also don't know why it is like standard in men's jeans to have different lengths of inseams so that you can get the right height for you. Why is that such a hard concept for, for it to be standard across women's jeans? I don't know. Few sites have tall jeans for people of my height, which I'm for reference, I'm 5'10". And they just still don't do it for me or the styles aren't exactly what I want or something about the fit is off. So it's been a real struggle for me. And these still could be a little bit longer in my opinion, but I think in terms of the fit, the length, the wash, these are so beautiful. And they're the Citizens of Humanity and Nina. A Nina jean. Oh my God, the wash is so soft. The color is so nice. They're a nice, loose, wide leg. They're not flared in any way. They're just a loose leg and they have a nice fade on them and they just fit me like nothing else. They were very pricey. I did realize they do come in a long option as well with the 33 inch inseam, which I want to get very badly. I just haven't had the extra money to spare on jeans right now, but these are my favorite jeans that I bought all year last year. The best. I love them. I want to have them in every color if I can. These were my favorite discovery of last year. Okay? You need them. Point blank. Period. Okay. Lastly, two things. Okay? Lifestyle. My lifestyle revolves around eating and drinking. So these correspond to that. Okay? Number one. A Dutch oven. Okay? You need one. Specifically, not a knockoff one. The knockoff ones are fine. I have a knockoff one, a little mini one. I love it. But I think for your main Dutch oven, 
just go ahead splurge on either Staub or La Creuset. I love my knockoff one, but I think if I did as much as I did in that one, the enamel just wouldn't be the same. But, you know, you do you. If you want to get a dupe La Creuset, they sell a million of them, go for it. I just think the colors of these and the sizes and the um, lifelong like guarantee policy for your main big Dutch oven is worth it in my opinion. This specific one is the five quart, five and a half, five quart La Creuset in Artisho. And I love the deep green, I'm a green girly and I love it. This has been the main thing that I use as my pot, as a, as everything, braising, everything goes in here, soups, pasta sauce, everything. I have loved this pot. I got it in the summer as with some of the money that we got as a wedding gift and I think it's a great thing to invest in and you'll only need one in your whole life. Get one. You won't regret it. If you love to cook and love to eat, which I do. Next, to the drinking part, wine glasses. Specifically, these ones from Estelle. I love that they are tinted green. Again, I'm a green girly. I love green, okay? Bring in the green, rain in the cash. Green has been my color lately. I don't know what it is about green, but suddenly can't get enough of it. I love that they're subtle. They look kind of like almost recycled glass and they're the right dimension. The stem is nice and thin and I just think it's a nice still neutral color. It still goes with everything, but it's so beautiful. And they have coupes and you know um, tumblers and all sorts of different style of glasses and whatever color glass that you wanna choose. I wish I could get a bunch more. I have this green one and an iridescent one for my champagne coupes. I also really like the light blue. I was so torn between the green and the light blue for the wine glasses and I ended up going with the green. But Estelle glassware is beautiful. I highly recommend, again, this was a wedding gift from one of my best friends, CJ and it came in a set of six. I love it. We use it all the time and it's one of my favorite things from last year starting with last summer. They're made in Poland. They're beautiful quality. I don't think they're so fragile that I'm worried about breaking them every day because they're still thick enough glass where I'm not just, you know, can't use them. They can't come off the shelf. I like using my things. I don't just like having pretty things that I stare at and never use. That's not me, that's not who I am. I don't like that. These, great. Get them. Okay. In the home category, aside from these two things, I wanted to mention my sheets for my bed because I think that you see so many influencers promoting two specific brands and that's Brooklinen and Parachute and I'm sure they're absolutely lovely and gorgeous and beautiful and worth every penny. I bought my first thing from Parachute this year which is my pillow on top of my bed. Love it. But their sheets cost around the $400 mark for a king size bed which was just a lot. So I wanted to share my favorite sheet set that I think is so comfortable and very affordable. It's from Macy's. It's their cotton 500 thread count sheets. I get them in the striped white. Here's a little picture. Link will be down below. And they're usually always on sale, whether that be Labor Day, 4th of July, Christmas, uh, like I don't know, pick a holiday it's always on sale and you can get them for $300 less than a lot of these other Insta influencer brands that are heavily, heavily promoted on social media these days. And I think they're absolutely amazing. They're so soft. I love, they're the sheets on all of our beds in the house. 
And then I do want to eventually splurge on a pair of linen sheets from either Brooklyn or Parachute, but we've just had like, you know, so many things in your life come up to spend money on and that hasn't been the priority when I do love my regular cotton sheets so much. I do have a linen duvet from Crate and Barrel, which I absolutely love. Here is a picture of the duvet, link down below. But I think that's something to really check out because I don't think Macy's ever gets talked about these days and for good reason, you know, not a lot there. But I actually learned about these sheets from my mother-in-law who has them all in her house and they are phenomenal. So yeah, last pro tip. And that is everything I could think of in terms of my key favorite items. Let me know if this is something you liked me doing. I could do them more frequently or, you know, if it sucks and if it's boring, let me know too. And I won't do it again. See you in the next one.